What are the top 10 black and white movies? But the black and white movies from any era doesn't have to be classic, can also be modern. Find out right now, right here on Movie Mount Rushmore. Hey screeners, how you doing? It's me, the one AJ, Anthony Jordan. And me, Nico Lero, and Fanuary continues, AJ. Indeed it does, indeed it does. And believe it or not, guys, it's not Frank Torres' turn this week. No, I believe it's good old 001, Mr. Platinum Silver Screen dude himself, Gavin Mann, who has given us the challenge, which at first I thought would be hard. Then I thought, oh, I've got them. Then it became really hard because... I was like, oh, God, I haven't seen a lot of black and white movies. Right. Get them out. Knock them out. Then how many black and white movies I wanted to see, I was like, oh, good Lord above. This could go on forever. This could have multiple versions and ways of breaking this down. So very good challenge, Gavin. Very difficult challenge, Gavin, at the same time. That's that's the only way I could break it down. Yeah. Not, not only a very difficult challenge, but I actually think... I'm I'm always happy with the lists and topics that we have. I can't remember the last time I've looked at a top 10 list and been like, other than maybe my number nine or 10, pretty much all of my other eight movies on a given day, I could put them at number one with a different argument. Like this list is just banger after banger after banger. It's fantastic. Yeah, I'm I'm kind of similar. Um, some films got a rewatch. Others, I like my number one. I, I thought to be true to form had to stay as that. I, I know you know what it is. Um, but short yes, of that, of like, I, I, I nearly even took it off to be different. But I was like, I feel this could have been done by the decades. This could have been a see. This could have been a month long episode of of um, top tens because it's it's so vast. It, I I, really I wanted to be fresh in my list. Some are fresh, some are revisited. I, I kind of made it a mix, but my God, it was it was a good one. Put it this way, there's enough for me to do another top 10 black and white movies from any decade or any yeah. era, sorry. Um, yeah, it's, it's a superb list because you really, you know, you say a black and white movie and your mind instantly goes to silver screen Hollywood, the classic years, you think, you know, 30s, 40s, maybe a bit of 50s. And then you're like, nah, there were black and white movies coming out literally last year. It's like, yeah, damn. Oh, Jesus. Yeah. <laughs> what? So there was a film that was going to be like guaranteed on my top 10. Didn't even make it. It just hit me now. Okay. Oh, wow. <laughs> Very good. Hopefully I've got you. We'll see. No, um, I don't think you do because I don't think you enjoyed it. Oh, sorry, mate. <laughs> Unlucky. It's all good. Save it for another top 10 yeah. movies from any era. Black and white movies from any era. Uh, but, you know, a little preamble aside, shall we get into it? Yes, we will. But before we do, would you like to tell everyone what the Silver Screen Dudes movie Mount Rushmore is all about? Yes. Basically, we are in our seventh season. This is a weekly, weekly top 10 show delivered to you by two best friends going all the way back to our school age. And we're old. So that's a long relationship there. Here's how the show actually works. AJ and I actually get assigned a topic. We go our separate ways. We come right back here into this lovely little video podcast and deliver to you the silver screen dudes, our film, family, or individual top tens. This week, AJ will go first, delivering his bottom three. I will then deliver my bottom three. AJ will deliver his next two. I will deliver my next two. And then we will trade one apiece. If at any time while we are running off our individual top ten list, one person has a movie in a higher position, the person will say, Hunt. And we will punt and talk about that movie when we get to the higher position. Once we have both rounded off our individual top 10 lists, we will create the movie in the voice of the dearly departed Matthew Perry Chandler, in the voice of his Chandler Bing character, the movie Mount Rushmore. These are the four quintessential diverse must-see movies of the genre, which this week is... Top 10 black and white movies of any era. Now, guys, once we, the Silver Screen Dudes, have the challenge of making the four must see movies of the topic is on you to get laser focused you head on over to x and you go to at movie empty rushmore or more importantly at we love movies movie polls for you from jt at we love movies and that's where you will 
crown El Capitan, El Numero Uno, the best of the best of the best. And in the words of Highlander, oh yeah, I forgot, sir. And in the words of Highlander, in the end, there can be only one. Take that, Hollywood reporter. Uh, if you know, you know. If you know. You know. <laughs> and with that, we will bring up last week's topic, which was... Uh, best one-on-one -on -one fight, excluding Luke Skywalker versus Darth Vader. And the contenders were... Hector versus Achilles and Troy. Uh, the Bride, Beatrix Kiddo versus Oren Ishii in Kill Bill. Uh, Arnie versus the Predator in Predator. And uh, Ivan Drago versus Rocky in Rocky IV. Right. AKA I'm Rocky gonna... Ends the Cold War. I'm going to go on the fact that there are haters on this planet, kind of like Crash. Hector versus Achilles in number four. Yeah, it is. Shouldn't be. By the way, it was all pretty close this week. It was all actually quite close. Um, Hector versus Achilles got uh, thirteen percent, one three. Got into double digits. Not bad good, for four. Good, 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 good. So, just to really mess with you now, there is only seven percent separating the next three. It's very tight. Right. I am so torn on this. Ah. Uh... I don't Bro, this do literally another day. This could have flipped another way. This was the, ki the kill bill in me doesn't want to do it. Is it Beatrix versus Oren? It is. Well done. It is Beatrix versus Oren. Kill Bill. Okay. The Beatrix cool. versus Oren got twenty six percent. Cool. Right. Predator number two. Well done. Yes. <laughs> Get in there. The Cold War wins it. I can't believe that. Rocky beating Predator? I was like, okay. You know why? That, one, that surprised me. You know um, why? Arnie versus Predator got 28%, and Drago versus Rocky got 33%. Man, you know people why? love that Rocky franchise. America. That's why. America. America. He's so. not human. <laughs> <laughs> there we are. There we are. Love okay. Let's You're number 10, off. please, AJ. Right. In at number 10... I don't know if you've heard of this one, my bro. Edutain me. Across to me, and maybe you have via proxy or something I'll be discussing later on. This <laughs> is called Glenn or Glenda, brought to you by Edward D. Wood Jr. No. All right. So um, this is actually what I would say. I believe it was released in the nine. I believe nineteen fifty four. It's fifties anyway. The reason why I take a lot of respect for this film. Um, it's only about an hour and something. It's like a mini documentary. There are some parts of it that is, it's a film, but it's like a documentary. And it's really challenging to the idea of transvestites and transsexuals and hermaphrodites. Um, brought to you by Edward. Transvestites or transgender, sorry? Transvestites. It is transvestites. Okay. But they do also delve slightly into um, transgender, is a, a, you know, a transitioning and hermaphrodites and whatnot. Um, it, it's very brave because at the time that this was released, and this is America we're talking, you would, talk, you would hear about men being arrested for dressing up as women, you know, but it was still a form of expression. And what's really interesting about this is that Edward D. Wood was actually a transvestite himself. So I did not know that the main character is he he portray he's actually in the film portraying Glenn slash Glenda. So you find out that the film starts with a transvestite man who's um committed suicide and it's all about not being able to live as he would. And then they go like the police then go to a doctor to find out what caused this, and the doctor just starts to give a case study and this is where he talks about glenn who's actually engaged to a woman and they get on really well but he can't show her his other side and it there are some parts i thought it's very of its time the way they show like well what happens when this man with his rough exterior wants to go home and relax he still has to live within the clothes of this whereas a woman gets to live this way like it's not for me to judge but it felt very 50s in which the way the tone was portrayed however the message may still be realistic at this point and i feel someone directing and writing this film is familiar with it because it's a life they've lived. And after they show that, they then show of what they call hermaphrodite. Now, I don't believe the person had both genitalia from what I've understood in the film, but they have transitioned in the film and they explore transitioning from a male to a female, from Alan to Alice. And I, I found it quite interesting and very brave to tackle at that time. Um, some would say it's a bit 
out there and they didn't there was one scene near the third act that just seemed to drag and I wasn't too sure what they were trying to say with that but overall I was really impressed by this film um, I know it's nice everyone but I did like it nice you're number nine this is one that we've brought up before and I believe we've called it one of the oldest films in silver screen dudes history and I couldn't help but bring it up again um a trip uh... to the moon I, I can't I, I, like I, I want it to be different, and I sometimes I even feel like I'm doing it an injustice by keeping it this low each time. But the effects that this film brings from 1908, like 1908 isn't it? Is it 1900? I thought it was 1902, but it, look, it's 1900s. It hasn't entered 19 double digits, right? It's insane. It is officially it. the oldest movie we've spoken about. For yeah, sure. and each time it comes up, and some of the stuff that they've done. It, it, it's it's like to me the earliest sci-fi even if it's not the oldest film that we've got it's the earliest sci-fi you'll come across and some stuff for where they were you know you've got to think that man hadn't landed on the moon some of the ideas and concepts they had were very close to reality like credit to them credit to yeah. them it's just a little French silent film and it delivered um, you know these little puffs of smoke and fireworks to show people disappearing and stuff popping up and their visions of aliens it's it's only a few minutes long, but it's 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 worth watching, and it's available on YouTube, guys. It's it's, it's out there to be found. It's quite watch. brilliant. It's quite yeah. quite quite brilliant. You have to. These are the movies you have to look at as time capsules. You can't look at it through the prism of twenty twenty four. This, oh, I'm so proud of you, AJ. This is one for the cinephiles. This is one for people this who one care I about the history. This one I can't disagree. It is something that if you appreciate film, and it's not just about our oh, the crash bang wallops of today this is something to be like wow you know if you really just sit back and think they didn't have what we have now there is no you know alexa create this there is no ai do this yeah you know, there is no, no chat this GPT. is um this this is very very much this is like one of those things you see them today you know people who are good you know good at building things with their hands and they take like a nothing and turn something turn it into something amazing this is very much like that people working with extremely limited tools but knowing how to get the most mileage out of them it's very and having that creative thinking to think outside the box and how to do that's very clever yeah yeah nothing but love for it nothing but love for it right i feel we might be saying punt but then i don't know how things land for you on this one it's the comic strip brought to life sin city Ah, so uh, it is my number 10. Oh, nice. Nice, nice, nice. Um, um, yeah, I'm, I'm glad this has been brought up because I it doesn't get talked about enough anymore, this film. We don't. We don't. And this is the thing, you know, and, and part of me was like, when I first thought of this, and obviously my number one being my number one, and at first I forgot about that. I was like, Sin City is going to be my number one. Then I remembered other films and it came up. And I, in a way, I feel like a disservice. But one thing I love about Sin City is I've not read Frank Miller's graphic novel, but it is literally a panel brought to life. And it was such an interesting take on the way you see cinema films. Like this was something so novel because again, you can know your Watchmen, you can know your Batmans, your Supermans, your Iron Mans, call it, call a hero, they're, they're in there. Even the closest we ever had was, <clears throat> Ang Lee's the Hulk, and those were only like transitional mm. <laughs> scenes. This was this was something fresh, and it was also weird, and it was something hard for me to take in on the first take in. But when I stop and think about it, it's like pop fiction, mini stories told in between. So you've got one story, you move on to a next, and it all just works. Yeah, um, I wasn't even a fan, if I'm honest, when I first took it in. But you sit back and study and think this is the way to take it in like a, a bunch of mini stories you appreciate it a crap load more so as someone who has read both the dame to kill for and that yellow bastard let me tell you this mickey rourke is marv <laughs> i had a feeling on that and by the way i'm not going to censor that word youtube it's the title of the thing so the b word yeah. remains right right i'm not claiming that one yeah i don't think it is that still a swear word i believe it is i oh, one time i know it was the title of the book but no, yeah um, yeah, YouTube can do 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 a do a big hairy one with that. See, I didn't swear. <laughs> <laughs> um, Demonetize us, will you? Uh, yeah, look, Sin City is is quite the wonderful achievement. It's taken three of Frank Miller's very very famous graphic novels, smushed them together in a coherent story, 
it's quite brilliant. Um, sexual awakening for a lot of teenage boys with the table dancing scene. Thank you, Jessica Alba. To this day, you are still my goddess. Thank you. Um, yeah, man. I so stylish, hyper violent, witty, cool dialogue, well paced. It's pretty flawless. I thought it would have made a bigger impact on pop culture than it did. That's, I guess, the only... I, I don't know why Lightning didn't strike with this one. It was just like... Do you know what I think it is? If it was recognisable heroes. I guarantee you. If this was a panel... Maybe. maybe it, it, it kind of feels like it's been resigned to that Matrix territory now. The people who saw it will look back on it and go, yeah, that was cool. But it's not part of... You know, the, we discussed this a few weeks ago when people were like, uh, when someone was saying, uh, oh, the Matrix changed cinema, and we were both, did it? Yeah. Break yeah. it down. Um, and people, we were all thinking that back in 03, 04, whenever this came out, oh, this is going to change cinema. It didn't. Yeah. It was a great ride. Great yeah. ride. So that was your eight, my ten. Uh, cool. My nine. Great film. Great, great, great film. Uh, Harper Lee's To Kill a Mockingbird. I'm glad you enjoyed it. <laughs> that That's sounds like someone who didn't enjoy it. I, do you know what it is? I think I watched, I was going to say studied it, and for better or worse, I feel like I did. It was something we've done when it came to courtroom drama. And I feel the story dragged before getting to the courtroom. And I think maybe the intention behind it was something. I, I didn't dislike the story. But I felt it was more uh, an education than the actual case, the, the, the taking on of the case, which kind of bugged me when I watched the film. Um, I um, yeah. So my takeaway from To Kill a Mockingbird is I think it's a really beautiful exercise in restraint um, from not so much from the filmmaker, but from Harper Lee himself and seeing that coming to life. It, it's very simplistic to say that it's... It's a it's a racially infused crime seen through the eyes of a of a child. It, you, sure, but there's more to it than that. The pacing of the book is very childlike. Life bobbly moves, you know, at a slow pace for a kid. Even though they're growing up the whole time, their life is quite monotonous. It's like go out, play, do it more. Right? Little things come into their life. They forget about it. They move on. Go back to playing. Meanwhile, you've got this wonderful character called Atticus Finch, played by the... I, I love Gregory Peck. I really do. I think he's brilliant. Um, he, he plays this role pitch perfectly, and he does this really great balance of being both a protective father, being a good man, but also knowing when to, like, turn the dial. Like when he's sitting outside the house, shotgun in arm, you think, this is the same guy? Okay. Okay, cool. He played it brilliantly. I I the pacing didn't bother me. I thought it was fitting for what they were going for. I'm a big fan of this film. Cool. Look, I think sometimes you get a takeaway. Um, as you said to me previously about being in the right zone when watching a film, um, it, it does apply sometimes. So yeah. Yeah. Uh and my number eight. I mean, this could be higher. But the thing is, they're all, from now on, in my opinion, these are all, it, it's shameless. It's banger after banger after banger after banger. It, it's insane now. Um, Tennessee Williams, A Streetcar Named Desire. Oh, man. With the now, this, this I'm going to say to you, is definitely, I feel like I need to be in the right zone. I'm not going to lie, right? We've talked about this film before, and I felt like I need to try and get it. I tried to watch this yesterday. It was just yesterday. And I dare say that conditions can get the best of me because I know I was up, out, in and out, what have you. Uh, no. I was very close, though. But here's the thing. I was very, not very close. I was ultra confused as to what the narrative of this film was. I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to allow you to explain it, and it allows me to watch yeah. it. That's why I'm knocking it before giving you what it was. Uh, you watch the film, and from what I've previously heard, Blanche not only descends into madness throughout this film, she's not really the one you're meant to support in this film. However, you're not really meant to support anyone in this film. They're not but here's exactly... the thing, because like here's how I saw the film. She looks like she's up to something because she's moved and she's very 
hoity-toity. We'll just call it that. Then you've got Marlon Brando coming in and you look like she's flirting with him and you think, you're a piece of dirt. I don't like what you're doing here. And he's like, I'm going to catch her out and whatever it is. But gradually, I found myself being more of her fan than his. And I was like being swung into who am I supporting? And then I was like, I haven't really seen this. I know this is meant to be like a cover up. And there were some parts where they're like, it pushes the envelope, which granted, with a 2026, 2026, where the hell am I? If we're a 2024 lens on, you're not going to see what was pushing the envelope back then. I get it. We've seen everything. This no, I don't agree with you at all. The ending of this movie still, for me, pushes the envelope now. Not going to lie. I gave up with the last half an hour. I was like, I'm not giving it the third. I'm not feeling it enough for it to make my list. And I don't know. If I am going to appreciate this film, I'm going to have to start again. I don't have the physical time to. So the film leaves you on this wonderful did he, didn't he? And... Blanche very much becomes a victim of, you know, Peter and the wolf syndrome, right? The the girl who cried wolf too many times. Because at this point, you realize that it's just lie after lie after manipulation. She's a serial liar and he's a complete hedonist. Um, he's not a good person. She's not a good person. Arguably, the best person in the film is Stella, um, her sister, you know, representing the purity of having the baby and all that. But even she's kind of a wet doormat, to be she honest. She kind of bugged me as well. The time she walked away, he gets sprung with a shower and he's like, Stella! And she's like, okay, I'll come down. And oh, you don't understand. I was like, yeah. I don't know if I like you too much. No, she's weak. <laughs> she's weak. And you saw the follow-up scene of Blanche saying, like, he's a terrible man. And then when he walks in, she's like throwing himself, going, it's Stanley. It's like, oh, you're all really annoying characters. But now think about this. You've had enough relationships to know. Relationships are very nuanced. They're anything mm -hmm. but straightforward and simple. This movie shows that brilliantly. Um, it shows the Peter and the Wolf syndrome brilliantly. It shows that pretty much we've all got some dirty in us. We've all got some bad in us. We've all lied. I love the cross-examination they do of Blanche as being this character with all sorts of mental health problems. Um, like she's <laughs> she's a barrel of messed up, Miss Poor Cookie. And Stanley equally the same. And just, it's it's a game of cat and mouse between them. And it gets ugly, really, really ugly at the end. But even when it's got ugly, you're thinking, but did it? Because you've shown me throughout the last 90 minutes that I can't trust you. And that in turn is hugely conflicting because you're like, ha, huh, if it's true, oh God, even as an audience member, I'm a terrible person for not believing you if it's true. But God damn, you're a terrible person for making me believe you if it's not true. And you're kind of like a real life case. Like you, you're kind of conflicted. Like the, uh, I'm staying out of this one. Hmm. I will give it another shot. There are things that can prove it can work, but the jury's out on it at the moment. I was like, oh, and I really wanted to enjoy it. I really did. Okay. You're number seven. Couldn't follow it. But here's one. Here's the one. Previously, you said to me I wasn't in the right headspace. And the first time I watched it, I, again, couldn't follow the narrative. This time I did. And I actually enjoyed the ride. Um, do I love it? No. Like it? Yes. Sadly, what bugged me is my favourite part of it is the colour scene. I'm talking about Clerks. Oh, I made your list! <laughs> It made the list. It made yes. The list. Um, I I I don't know what I saw the first time I watched it, but it's very different this time round. Um, I think maybe because he said take it like on a Pulp Fiction thing, and I was just listening to the quirky speech behind yeah. it. Um, there were, I I just really enjoyed it. I I, I know it, what is the story. It's just two guys. There I think that's none. what I had to appreciate. The story there is, is just two it's guys a movie about nothing. How they treat customers and life and their their perception of it. It was it, it was fun. It was fun. It, but as I said, it was the scene in the funeral home when they go into cartoon. When I was like, "What the hell am I watching?" Yeah. <laughs> I just completely lost myself, and I, in a way, nearly didn't make it because I felt like a black and white movie should be black and white. Hence, one of my favorite films has not made the list for me. But again, I was also very aware that Sin City has a hint of colour in it and I've allowed that to go in. So I was a bit torn with this and I was like, it's only a couple of minutes so we'll do that. But no, great film. Great film. Um, I've got to check. Uh, look, I'm on the Kevin Smith journey. I started at film one and I, 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 I'm I, getting his style. So, And I Good. saw it at the end, Jay and Silent Bob will return in Dogma. I was like, hmm, maybe Dogma's next. Maybe Wait, Kurt's next. I'm not sure. Wait till you see Dogma. That for me, I think that's his best work. 
but he's got so many good ones. Mall rats chasing Amy. Some more rats is the I, one that sticks in my head is one I really want to see. Mall rats is really good. Chasing Amy is one of his most profound pieces of work. Um, Jay and Silent Bob Strike Back is his stupidest, but it's still yeah, it's it's really 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 funny. Um, yeah, man, I, I'm massive Kevin Smith Kevin Smith guy. Look, this movie is literally like when you and me would leave the lycée and st sit on the stairs or in that the rond point or on the island and just talk talk crap for two hours yeah that's what this film is that's what i took it as this time and i don't know why i couldn't see that last time maybe i was looking for a story and i'm like what is going on and i couldn't but this time taking it in i was like this yeah as i said it, it was because of the way I like to consume a film, I do need some form of a story. And I know there was an overarching one, essentially. But I was like, yeah, you know what? It's fun. So would I say I loved it? No. Maybe after two or three watches, I might do. But I, I really liked it. I didn't, it's it does get better much. each time. I have to say, it does get better each time. Cool. Yeah. I'm really happy number. you've put that on. Your number six. Thank you. My number six is related to my number ten. Because, yes. Uh, I know. The, you know where we're going, yeah? Mm -hmm. it's it's edward yeah good old johnny depp as edward i yep. nearly very very nearly done um project nine from outer space as well but um yeah it just it just couldn't make that i couldn't i couldn't do three of his films in one go <laughs> and what i loved about this again johnny depp oh what a talent what a talent um good to see george the animal still as a wrestling fan but what I liked about this is Edward is Tommy Wiso of his generation. You know, um, it it's everything you need. This is the disaster artist for better or worse terms. If you appreciate the disaster artist, you're going to love Edward. It's it, it's the only comparisons I can build. It's just showing a, a journey. <laughs> I'm sure how Edward would feel being compared to Tommy Wiseau. <laughs> Bro, this film has got, I think, a Turkey Award. Like, they started off the Turkey Awards, not even the Razzies, the Turkey Awards, because this guy is known as the worst... Project Nine is meant to be, like, the worst film of all times, and he's known as the worst director of all time. That's the exact thing that's gone to I mean, it. He's definitely not, smoke. Okay. Listen, I like Glenn or Glenda, where some people call it, like, trash B-movie. Like, I was like, I don't feel he's that bad. I actually liked... If you, Have you seen Project Nine, by the chance? No. I had a watch of it. Um, again, in and out, really bad condition. But um, some of the way he uses stock uh, stock imaging to make stuff work and stuff like that, really, he, it's not as bad as it was. There was some terrible acting. There are some scenes that are very close to, hey, Mark, how's your sex life? Like, literally talking to a pilot, and they're like, literally, a that full-on conversation with the pilot, and then she turns around to the co-pilot, oh, I haven't said hi to you or something like that. And it's like, he's asked her out to a date while they're talking about an alien invasion, and you're like, Oh, you didn't really just do that, did you? Literally, a guy's talking about an alien invasion. He's like, hi, Gina. Hi, Mark. It was, it was, he's not Mark, but it was literally to that degree of, oh, you didn't. But, and this film shows you how he went from making bad film after bad film and weird ways of, like, just one takes. Like, I, in Silver Screen News, I talked about one take Tony. He was literally that, like, okay, cut. They're like, do you want to? It's so bad. Have you seen this film, yeah? No. Oh, Edward with Johnny, yes. Yeah, yeah, yeah. You know the part where like George the Animal still walks into the into the framework of the door. Long ago, bro. I ain't okay. got no memory of this. And they're like, um, do you want to reshoot that? He's like, no, I think that's how a zombie would work. Like the guy literally worked off of one takes to make his films. It's absolutely bat crap crazy. But it worked, and that's why you can balance it. I do you know what? If it's a long time ago, it's on Disney Plus. Give it another watch. I'd be intrigued to see how you feel about it. But I'm yeah, just I, I, just, I just had shades of Tommy on it, man. But yeah, I, I enjoyed poor this. Ed. <laughs> poor Ed, maybe poor Tommy. I don't know. Um, I, I don't know. I somehow feel Tommy might have got inspiration from Ed as well, but it's not for me to judge. I love mm. Tommy and I've got a lot of love for Ed based on what I've got off of this. I actually want to see the rest of Edward's collection of films. Like it's 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 interesting but weird. You've got me intrigued about going to down an Edward rabbit hole now. Um my number seven. Uh, a arguably the most influential comedy of all time. Some like it hot. Marilyn Monroe. Very I knew you'd have it as well. Though. Of course. Dude, what I found out recently, did you know this is a remake? No. How would I? Of what? <laughs> like, how, how old film? was this? 
Trip to the Moon old for it to be a remake? It's a remake of a German film. Ah. Who knew, right? No. Some no. Like It Hot is a remake. Mine blown. Right? So cool. Even back then, they were doing remakes. Uh, they don't need to do remakes now. They did them back then, too. Uh, <laughs> I love it. I love how the, the 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 narrative just never never changes. Poor Nate, bless him, going like, "There's no good vampire movies in the 21st century." What? <laughs> <laughs> Bro, there's more than Twilight. He was he's a Twilight. He he's a Twilight boy guy. That's what he <laughs> <laughs> Why well, that boy is gonna be a Batman? Yes, he is, and he's awesome. Um, yeah, some like it hot. We speak about it a lot on this channel. I believe it's Mr. Andy Hart's favorite movie at Fandango Groover on X. It's so good. Um, it's quite the accomplishment when you consider that Marilyn Monroe was very happy on pills for this movie. Um, but it's got some it's got some surprising depth to it. Yes, it's got slapstick, yes, it's got good comedy vibes, but it's also kind of gnarly, like the mob trying to whack them and then chasing them throughout the movie, and that whacking scene in the garage is is quite intense actually for a comedy. Like call me, I was like, okay, <laughs> man got full on robocopped. Like, okay. <laughs> There's a reference that you may not remember. Um, but yeah, man, I love this film. Funny, timeless, really is timeless, arguably more relevant now than Emma, but than ever. I'm not a woman. Nobody's perfect. You know what I mean? It's 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 really aged quite magnificently, this film. If you haven't seen it, really go back and watch it. This is an all-time great. Cool. Cool, cool, cool. Oh, yeah, I need to rewatch it. It's been a while for me. Not been good. That's your number seven, seven, yeah? That was my seven. My six. Oh, this was always going to make the list. I thought this was going to be my number one at one point, and then the brain started working. But possibly my favourite French film ever. Mathieu Kessovic's La N. Do you know what? This was on the list, and it was that very poster. Another film took over and came up a lot higher. So It's um... so powerful. I know. It's so I, The reason I knew I could take it off is because I knew if anyhow you talk a black and white film in any era, you are all over this film. Mm -hmm. Yeah, that's the only reason I knew I could get rid of it. Yeah, this is very much my jam. A French hood movie with a, <laughs> with a North African, a black guy, and a Jew. Who knew? Um, set against the first Parisian riots during the 90s, we open on Paris. It's a city in complete decay. Gangs run the city. All true, by the way. This went down. This happened in Paris. It's not like yeah. some fantasy. Like, no, no, this happened. <laughs> like that opening you see of the of the streets in decay and the cars on fire. That's first hand footage that Kesovic took of Paris as it was burning. It's crazy that this happened. But it just goes to show. It does feel post-apocalyptic post watching it. It just doesn't feel real. Some it's, parts it does. Yes. Yeah, like, how did this happen? I'll tell you how. Because no one does revolution like the French. <laughs> Annoy us, we behead you. <laughs> just ask good old Louis or, or Marie. <laughs> there are a few. Dude, like, don't mess with the French when it comes to, like, take away our rights. Revolution. <laughs> it Indeed. just is Indeed. what it is and this movie really really captures the aftermath of a riot and of a city in complete decay as a result of it hyper violent but also hugely funny not funny as in it's a comedy but funny as in he just said what yes, yes, yes. your mother sucks bears <laughs> what <laughs> It's got it's brilliant Ninga, very, very, very rude. But the the exchange between the characters, oh woman, je l'ai mis comme ça, papa bang sur la tête, il a pris dans le cul et c'est fini comme ça. It's like wow, you yeah. really, really tapped into your inner hood for this movie. It's you but it's authentic. That's the thing about it. For it you to be what it, it, it's authentic. You took the words out of my mouth. 
you can just see the little Lascar in the streets behaving exactly like this. I mean, I've seen it firsthand. The less privileged kids of Paris do behave like this. I don't mean with the riots, but I mean their lingo and the music they're into and the way they talk to each other. It's mega authentic. It's yeah. Outside of and Paris. the way they would challenge the police, you're like, you're not allowed to be on the roof, but we're not doing anything, you can't move. Like it's it's very authentic. The part it's I crazy. love is when the mayor shows up to their estate block and he's like, You young gentlemen, come down. And and Vince is just like, Oh, well, well, Monsieur le Maire, monte ici, couche ton main dans le cul, le maire. Oui, Mr. Mayor, come up here, let's have a chat, innit? It's like, <laughs> <laughs> it's crazy, man. You're number five. Right, my number five. Um, this is an exchange of your number one, believe it or not. I know what your number one is without even going there, because each time we go into these films, we always have the same one and two. Um, I've finally seen another Kurosawa movie. Rashomon has been seen. Ain't it good? Had to, had to make the list. Had to make the list. For, for it to, as I said, I wanted to bring a bit of variety into this list. And it was, it was, it was good. This was, this was nice. This was a different... It, it's not Seven Samurai, but it's still good. This is what I like about it. It's, it's very different. Um, Some people what, say it's better than Seven Samurai. I can't wrap my head around No, it. no, no, no. Um, the third witness or the third person to tell the story kind of threw me off. If you know me and the Green Mile, you want to understand why the third witness troubled me. It just wasn't <laughs> what I was ready for. I was like, okay, I get it, but I, I don't get it at the same time. Um, yeah, it, it's it's literally a case of what is the truth and this is what i like about this film because in this situation dare i say even the fourth witness has me wondering is that the truth as much as it should be seen as the truth i've had to digest three different versions of the truth so far and not just that the third the fourth witness is also the first technically the fifth the fifth witness and the first witness are technically the same person and those are two very different tales so why should i believe you in the second instance of you, of you talking um, ain't it wonderful how over half a century on we're still praising kurosawa for creating the unreliable narrative plot device yeah and you know it you know this is the thing so there's so much to it and i, I was very intrigued of how you can see different perspectives and you, it's on you to decide what is real from what's not, which is essentially the case of a jury. Like you're, you're going to hear different sides of a story, multiple at some point, and you have to think what is the most logical. Could it be argued that this is also Kurosawa creating what we've come to know today as the court of public opinion? Because he's literally putting it to the audience and going, you decide. Well, yeah, the yeah. literal characters in the movie are going, yeah, that's a story. That's a story. I don't know where to believe. Yeah. Crazy, huh? And yeah. Toshiro Mifune is so good. Jesus Christ. He's yeah. so good. Yeah. I love him. He's such a larger than life. Like he's like he the brings Japanese... the eccentricity, doesn't he? He's, he's the just... Japanese Al Pacino, bro. You can just <laughs> see him going. Oh. He's so over the top, but in a way that never feels Tommy We so over the top, it feels Pacino over the top. Yeah. Ooh, uh, yeah, yeah. Um, I, I did enjoy his character. And even that, the the, the range that you get from yeah. him as well. Because again, when I go to what I'll call the fifth witness telling the story and without get without getting into it, but it's very different from when he's telling his side of the story in terms of, you know, how he handles the situation. And I have to respect the range that he delivered in that. So no, it was, it was a good watch. It was a good watch. And I, I, I'm happy to finally have it on my list, not just on a list, because yes, it's been discussed on the Silver Screen Dude front, but to say I've finally seen it and to add, I would recommend it for people to watch. Yeah, man, it's, I'm very happy you finally seen it. You see how influential it is now, which is fantastic. Okay, my number five. Thought it would be higher, but again, movies, Pushed it down. Martin Scorsese's Raging Bull. Man, I love this film so much. What De Niro did with this character, embodying the anger, embodying the, you know, the horrible, horrible husband, but at the same time, this mega star athlete who essentially crumbles under the pressure because of 
because of his lack of support system and his lack of ability to cope with this this crazy fame and this crazy lifestyle. He is ultimately just a simple guy from the block. He's, despite the fact that he's made for boxing, he's not made for boxing, if that makes sense. I need to see Raging Bull again. Um, Raging Bull was seen when you gave me all those VHS. So I'd seen Casino, Goodfellas, and Reservoir Dogs in the time and Raging Bull. Raging Bull and Taxi Driver are two films I feel that I need to assess again, to be honest. Mm. Uh, I, I love De Niro. I just, sometimes you can get movie overload. And I did want to try and get it in for this week. There were just too many films, Gavin. <laughs> just too many films. So and it's not a short movie. It's a Scorsese movie. They all yeah. long. Yeah, so I it, it couldn't make the cut or a rewatch this time. But and another black and white is very much quite high on the list of films I do want to see. That is superb, mate. Uh, your number four. Right, my number four, Don de Estas. This is the film I put you on to, and I don't know if it's going to be a punt if it makes the list or not. I know you love it. One of the original noirs, Double Indemnity. Side list, that was for my another. Okay, yeah. Um, if you appreciate a noir movie, this is like one of the first, if not the first, I can't remember. This, I remember being taught about it. It is the first. Movie. Yeah. And um, it's it's the it's the story of a, of a an, an insurance salesman who falls for the femme fatale, and it's the story of how, in order for what is it if her husband the husband dies this shows how long ago I've seen it, but the the husband dying in an accident she can claim double on the money and it can it's something to get away with so they're now plotting on how to get rid of the husband in an accident and run off together with the riches but if it was just as plain as simple as abc it wouldn't be a movie because the plot twists and turns that come along and trust and who's there and what you think you got away with and the police investigations and can you trust and will you oh trust? the paranoia it's so good absolutely intense incredible movie um been a while but I remember how hard it hits that when I thought of black and white movies, I couldn't leave it off. I nearly did. I very nearly did. And I was like, no, it's hard to. It, it needs to be on. And it, with no guarantee of us confirming that there would be another, I was right. like, it needs to make the list. It needs to make You know list. what I love about these old movies is they don't fap around at the beginning. Like it just gets straight in there. First scene. Oh, you're an insurance salesman. I'd like to talk to you about. No, no, no. It's like, Jesus, all right. <laughs> No, no time to get my yeah. coke and popcorn in this movie theater, huh? We yeah, yeah, yeah. These films, if you missed the beginning, catch the next screening. <laughs> Do not just walk into the room. I'll, I'll, catch, I'll catch the wind of it. No, no, no. You need every scene. Um, yeah, the, this is one of two of my uni films that that made the cut, and highly recommend it. It's, it's brilliant. It's um, for my number four, just go ahead and bring up the punt sign. How dare you? Four. Mine said four. You know. Pun. <laughs> <laughs> You're number three. Right, my number three. This Man's is the boy, second you know. <laughs> of this is the second of um uni films that I came across. And I'll be honest, I rewatched it this week and I I appreciate it a lot more than I did the first time. We are talking about Fitz Lang's first talking movie M. Have you heard of it? M or Metropolis? They're the same movie, aren't they? No, 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 no. No, Metropolis is like a sci-fi, no? Yeah. Yeah, this is not. No, no, no. I don't think I've seen M, you know. You need to. Bro, if you like Double Indemnity, jump on M all day long, right? I'm going to tell you the story, and I know you're going to be on it. Talk so, to me. You, we are. It might affect you a bit more now because you're in dad mode, but it's, it's not bad because it's not great. No, no, come Going at it is it's the story of a child killer. He goes around, there's a guy going around <laughs> killing children, but you don't see any murders, right? And you can see these kids, I think, singing a song, and the mom's like, Stop singing that song, it's not funny with the events that's going on. And then that same mother has gone into her house, and you can see this kid there, and she's reading the story, and this big sh the shadow comes on and is like, Hi, little girl, and he's whistling a song. I can't, I should know the song, but I can't think of it right now, what it's called. And he offers her a balloon, and that's it. Next thing on the new story. Is it Ellie Eichmann or something like that has gone missing, and that's it. We you know what's gone on, and the police are chronically on a mission to find who he is. And he's written a letter to the newspapers saying the police haven't taken me seriously, so I'm now writing to you guys. I will well, not it's got some zodiac to it, huh? Kind of. He writes this message, and it's like, oh, they haven't they haven't stopped 
what is it? The pol- they didn't take me seriously, but I'm just letting you know that I haven't finished just yet. So it's a short message and it gets published. And now people are all over the place. They're taking it serious. And the police officers are up to even more. They're trying to find him. You know, they've they've gone to the newspaper to get the original form of the letter to try and find fingerprints. They're trying to see the, the handwriting style. They're studying all of it. And they're there. And now what they're doing is they're stopping off in every establishment possible, hotels, bars, motels, the lot. And they're checking everybody's papers to try and find out who this killer is. Because, you know, there's been a series of kids being killed. What happens because they keep doing that? The mob are now not able to execute their business because in their places of business, the police are stopping them all the time. So now the mob are saying... We need to find this guy. <laughs> oh, damn. So he yeah. makes enemies with the wrong people. Okay. So now both sides, you've got the law after you and you've got the bad guys after you. And they're like, look, for us to be able to conduct our operations, we can't have the police stinging us on every given corner. So now the hunt begins. And now the mob are invested in it. And now the police are kind of aware, but I think the mob have kind of put, if I remember right, the mob have put a hit out like, we need to work together on this because business cannot flow so i'm encouraging all people to give all information provided the mob then start to hire all forms of beggars left right and center and start to offer them food and like a reward if you see anything your eyes and ears on the street find this guy eventually the killer is found by who i'm not going to spoil what happened i'm not going to spoil but very good film very good just under two hours. AJ Vision? I think it, yeah. But, okay. but if you Google it, and I, I, I'm, this is something I found recently, and it's how I saw Rashomon, believe it or not. I believe it's on Plex. Plex is, if you Google it, it's, it's, you only get a few adverts in between it, but you don't even need to sign up to Plex. I don't know if you've ever seen Plex. It's like a purple, a, a, an orangey yellow logo. And yeah, it's, it, it's yeah, it is on Plex. Yeah, bro, watch it. I went for the advert free version, but yeah, check it out on Plex. It's on Prime as well, uh, but paid. But with Plex, uh, it's there. Okay, a couple of adverts. All you need to do is just press the button at the bottom and it gives you the um... YouTube, you know. Oh, there you go. Not, what, what I know about Plex is that you, you were able to get the subtitles, but I'm guessing YouTube would have it as well. Let's have a look. But I highly, highly... This was brought up to me in uni as well. And it was a, a, a load of... Um, With his little remember. chopper, he will chop you? Come again? With his little chopper, he will chop That's you. Is that the song? Singing. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, it's on YouTube. There you go. <laughs> Love YouTube. Yeah, YouTube brings out some bangers every now and again. And there's this thing I remember my... I believe his name was Will Brooker, my, my teacher back then, was teaching us about why it was called M, because yes, it's murder, but you've also got the duality of the character and the two sides of the law chasing him. There's a, there's a lot behind why it could also be called M, but, but trust me. Okay, I actually it. really like the sound of this. Check it out. Oh, you're, you're, you're going to be all over it. I guarantee you, you're going to be all over okay. it. Okay, nice. Nice, nice, nice. Uh, my number three. Uh, sue me. I'm cheating. I love this film. American History X. <laughs> the minute you said sue me, the minute you said sue me, I knew where you were going. Um, Dude. can I be honest? American History X was initially my number 10 because of the mix of color and gray. Don't care. I, you know me. You know me in this film. Like it should really it's top four territory all day long. All Us. Day long. Top 10 movies of all time. This was our yeah. one commonality. Exactly, yeah. There you and go. I believe we both had it in the same spot, like number five or six or something. Yeah, yeah. Like, dude. Crazy good movie. Don't mess with Crazy the silver good. screen dudes in this film. Yeah, it's war. It's war. <laughs> to, 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 to crap on this film with us. Dude. The, the fact that the director kind of got exiled from Hollywood after making this film still makes me go, huh? Like, it's such a freaking masterpiece the black and white to tell the story in the past the dash of color to tell the modern day story there's more black and white than color yes, there is. 100%, um, 100%. and that's why it's making the list if this was just like two black and white scenes i'd be like oh, you're pushing it a bit but like no this is a predominantly two black and white easily. film huh 75 25 easily yeah that's what i'm thinking too um and it's so aging man the story of i mean look the black and white stuff is it's 
It, it, you know, it's a neo-Nazi, it's essentially. Huh? Yeah. It's the story. It is what you pay attention to. The black and white part is the story. It's the neo-Nazi who gets caught doing some dumb things to people of a certain skin complexion and he ends up in prison and it's his story of it's a story of uh retribution of reform and um you know it's tragic because you realize that once you go in that life even if you do a reform it still chases you the people who are in that world still haunt you the lifestyle that you used to live doesn't just go away because you've done time and it's you know it's very much the same very much the same message as Latin, which we spoke about a moment ago, provides hate breeds hate. Right. Yeah. And it's dude, it's, it's really tragic what happens with the two brothers. It's, it's, you know, it, and it wonderfully shows history repeating itself. The older brother did some dumb headed stuff. The younger brother follows suit. The dad was an influence, albeit a subtle one. Um, it's it really just shows a very very believable gradual spiral into his neo Nazism. Um, yeah. It's yeah, it's it's a messed up movie, man. Arguably, Edward Furlong has never been better than in this. I don't think so. I am yet to see it. If he has, I am um, yet to see it. If he has. Maybe Primal Fear, maybe, but he was such a force of nature in this. Oh. Yeah, he's oh, yeah. brilliant. Oh, That's yeah, who Barry that. Keoghan reminds me of. What, Furlong? Yeah. Barry Keoghan's got that same demented, calm vibe that Furlong has. I could get where you're going with that. I, I, I Yeah. I was, that like, is new, I was thinking, like, is he the new Tom Hardy? I'm like, no, nah, he's not. And I know it shouldn't be like the new this. Yes, he's the first Barry Keoghan, and I'm all happy for it. But if I had to assimilate him to someone, he's like freaking young Edward Furlong. That's a good thing. Yeah. Um, oh, I love this film, dude. You're number two. Bro, this film, this film, I, M is you, right? But yeah. I really, really encourage you to find this film. Um, it's paid or Asia Vision. <laughs> well, as I found somewhere recently on the internet, internet is what they say. If you can find it somewhere else, <laughs> they just say that. If not, they put internet. That's what someone's Instagram said recently. <laughs> But this one, bro, oh, it's a beauty, a beauty of a film. The Artist. Have oh. you heard of it? This film, I, I need to get, I need to get the year because I'm, I'm so shocked. 2011. 2011 black and white silent movie. No kidding. It's gorgeous. Absolutely gorgeous i i i fell in love with it if it wasn't for my number one being my number one there's a chance this could be like but i know that i could jump on a hype train but this film is cinematic beauty right uh not to mention the female lead Ber berenice Bejo, is also cinematic beauty but we won't get into that yeah <laughs> <laughs> but the story is it's very similar to singing in the rain but vice versa of singing in the rain because we're singing in the rain is showing that the stars of the silent era have to adapt to the talkies. This is different. So you've got this one guy who, oh, let me get his name. And it's French actors, you know, because it's a silent film, they can star alongside John Goodman and it means absolutely nothing because no one's actually talking, which is the beauty of this film. Jean Dujardin plays George Valentin, right? Now, his character is the biggest silent movie star and he actually is in a film with his wife in this film and as the film ends he's there applauding to you know it, 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 taking the clamors of the everyone in the cinema he's got this little shtick he's got with his dog where he pretends to shoot it and the dog plays dead and everything it's he's the biggest star he walks out of the cinema and he's taking a picture with from, taking pictures from the paparazzi and this girl comes out she tries, she's in the background and her bag drops and she tries to go to pick it up and she falls over the line, pushes into him. And he, he's kind of like, you're stealing my thunder, but he, he gives her a hug. She gives him a kiss on the cheek and it's like, who is this girl? And that's all the story is like, who is this girl? You can see a bit of jealousy from his wife, but it's just like, hey, it's just who she is. From all of this fame and what have you, this girl played by Berenice, it plays, I'm just going to get her character name, Pepe Miller. 
Pepe Miller decides to go down to Hollywood to just be an extra and on a film. And it's just to see a lady who can dance. That's all she needs to do. And ensues the fact that she tap dances and she gets picked. George sees the legs, but behind a curtain, doing some tap dancing. He's like, I like her style. They start tap dancing. They lift up the thing because he says, I need to see who this is. He recognises it. It's the girl from the picture. And with that, he gives her her first break in a film. And she now goes from that, just a feature act to appearing in her own films. So she's big, he's big, but they've not really done a lot together. Enter the talkies. Now, what does George say? It's just a fad. It won't last. He doesn't want to do talking movies. And what I love about this film is they show him a screen test of a talking movie, but you don't hear talking. It remains a silent movie. Mm -hmm. And that's what I thought was really interesting about it. And now what you see is the descent of his superstardom versus her ascent, Pepe's ascent, because she's going into the talking and moving. But they've always kind of maintained this friendship, even though their, their paths are going in juxtapos juxtaposing directions. Really, really beautiful film. And I don't want to give a spoiler, but there is one scene where you see George... <laughs> It's the most meta thing you can see. He puts down a glass and you hear the glass hitting the table and he reacts to the fact that you can hear glass hitting the table. <laughs> and everything about, yeah, like it's because it's a silent movie, right? So him hearing a sound, even though it's his real life. What the hell? It, bro, I, I, I'm not going to spoil anything more, but I just love that scene. I had to share that. But watch the film. Because I know you like your, your La La Lands and your Singing in the Rains, I know you're going to enjoy this film. I was going to yeah. say, the, the way you're describing it gives me proper Singing in the Rain vibes, you know? Yeah, but I, I kept looking at it and I'm like, it's the anti-Singing in the Rain because where they're adapting to it, this film remains silent. And it's just awesome the way that, honestly, when it comes to words, all right, there's one song that comes in, words don't come till the end. You do not hear words until the very end of this film. It remains a silent movie. I think it's art to get that in the 20, 2010s. Damn. Yeah. Bro, check it. Mind blown. <laughs> yeah, that sounds very me. The glass thing has got me so like, oh. Oh, I loved it. I loved it. <laughs> That's cool. I like that. Uh, dude, my number two. Um, my favorite Stanley Kubrick movie. Uh, one of my top five films of all time, Doctor Strange Love, or How I Learned to Stop Worrying and Love the Bomb. Every time people always get funky with me when I bring this up, because how can you say that it's The Shining? How can you say that it's Barry Lyndon or Full Metal Jacket or 2001 A Space Odyssey? I don't think so. I like this Strange is... Love. I like no. Strange Love. I didn't like The Shining, so you've got part of my vote already. I can't say I've seen the rest. I, yeah. This is the only Kubrick I will give time to. I've got to be honest. I love it. Full As Metal it Jacket. You, full Metal Jacket. You must watch. I it's will give it a shot. Awesome. I'm saying, 2001: A Space Odyssey. When I started seeing Gorilla Suit, like I had Cadbury's chocolate drumming. Phil Collins more than anything else. <laughs> Come into my head. I know that's it's, a sin. I know it's, it's the monkeys sin. from the Chewing commercial. <laughs> but yeah, that's, yeah, that's funny. Um, no, nah, man, Full Metal, you must watch. Must, must, must. Especially when we've got a certain topic coming up. I oh, know it doesn't qualify. Mm. Oh, that's a shame. Uh, November, November, Remembrance Day, 21st century war movies. Oh, yeah, yeah. And by that nature, no, it won't, yeah. No, nah, it doesn't qualify, obviously. Uh, but yeah, man, the Doctor Strange Love or How I Learned to Stop Loving and Learn to Love the Bomb, one of the all-time great acting performances from Peter Sellers, George C. Scott on firing form, a, a, a black comedy about the nuclear tension between Russia and America, the, 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 the constant espionaging that was happening between the two nations, the way that they have to collaborate together or do they in order to stop this rogue general who's trying to launch an a-bomb from b-52 bomber with one of the great all-time scenes going the guy riding bomb with his hat dude gentlemen you can't fight in here this is the war room <laughs> it's such a freaking great line isn't it 
Yeah, between I know Dimitri. Well, of course, Dimitri. Well, how do you think I feel, Dimitri? Like he's such a little mincer, isn't he? The the, the president, and then contrast that with what he's doing as man. man. <laughs> Sellers is a god for this film. An Sellers, actual god for this yeah. film. Sellers. You have to put him up there. In honesty, and I know it may it may be a topic, it may not be a topic, but spoiler. If we ever do one actor playing multiple characters in one film, he owns it. Forget anything you've seen in Nutty Professor, coming to America, God forbid, Big Mama's house. Nothing outdoes Peter Sellers doing multiple characters in this film. That's a good top 10 topic. Actors who have played multiple characters in the same movie. We'll table that. That's a really good idea. It's a good one if we can make 10. Yeah. There must be 10. In all of cinema, there must be 10. My, my, uh, unless you do Austin Powers 1, 2, and 3, then you're, you're not fine. Oh, that counts. Hell yeah, that counts. <laughs> <laughs> Between that, the Nutty Professors and the Big Mamas, it will work. It will work. <laughs> okay. <laughs> Yeah, man, no, and and this film, you know, it it does have a very somber message that hey, we need to be freaking careful with what we're doing with nukes. You know, it's it's still relevant today. It's it's very very much a timeless movie. And as we get, you know, crazier leaders like your Kims and your Donalds, it's kind of takes on a true meaning. It's like oh, Donald, who may be two term Donald. Which is no, maybe he's gonna be. I've told you this four years ago. I said Biden will do one term and then Don will be back. I told you this would happen. Yeah, Amer yeah. Americans love the underdog story. No, I don't know quite how you consider a billionaire who's gone bankrupt five times an underdog, but anyway, America. Well, he's my man. I like what he talk about. You mean he don't like black people? <laughs> yeah, that's the. <dope. laughs> That's too if he like guns. Oh, wicked mongrels. And um, we digress. But yeah, I get where you're at. I've said my piece. Uh, your, that was my two then. So, oh, by the way, Dr. Strange Off, if you haven't seen it, freaking get on it. It's incredible. I don't have a worst. Do you? Do you know what? I did, but I feel like I have a worse, worse than what I have. Please? I don't have. So here's the thing. I was going to go for and I did feel like I need to watch this film again, and I brought it up before as a worst. Brief Encounter. The story of a lady who had this weird brief encounter with a gentleman on the train, and she's subtly confessing to her husband while he's reading your newspaper, and she's mentally saying it. It's, it's meant to be a great love story. I didn't get it. I nearly went down the Casablanca route. But now that Whoa. you showed me strange love, and I saw the American flag, I'm going to quote and give my hate to America where I can. Birth of a Nation. I don't have an image for it because I've only just thought of it. But screw that film. Screw that film with the fire of a thousand suns. You want to portray a certain race of people as the enemy, which has led to stuff that is just nothing but hate within that country up until today. Screw you. <laughs> I don't have an image for it. Actually, by the time this is published, I'm going to have the picture up on it. Yes, Birth of a Nation remains my worst film of all time. Period. Not even seen it. I just had to see 13th, which I do encourage you to watch on Netflix, 13th. That will give yeah. you something people. But Birth of a Nation, only from that. I don't need to see the film to know I hate the film. <laughs> yes. Yeah. I'd co-sign that. Yeah. I'd co-sign that big time. Right. Should we get our obvious number ones out the way? <laughs> 12 Angry Men. Who was ever shocked that AJ was going to pick 12 Angry Men over absolutely anything? No. Oh, look at that. Both the silver screen dudes have a number one that has a number in it as their number one. He had a 12. <laughs> Very he good. Had, I'm not going to say it. I'm not going to be so rude as to spoil his number one. He knew what mine was as the film was done, as the topic was picked. I knew what his number one was as soon as it was picked. 12 Angry Men is the film I'm eternally grateful to be introduced to, thanks to the silver screen dudes. I've always loved the courtroom drama. I've loved that kind of whodunit element. And this film essentially over everything else just shows plausible deniability you've got 12 men in a room they've been in the jury for the longest while do you commit a 13 year old boy to death because that's the way it goes there's no life imprisonment over there it does he go to death it seems like a cut and dry case this is the fact he's guilty but it took one man to just say hold on hold on hold on hold on i i get what you're saying and i'm not saying he's innocent but this is a man's life let's just look at this a little deeper 
What do you mean? No, no, no. I, I get you. But let's just look a little deeper. And all we need to do is just have reasonable doubt. As long as it's re- cause that's what we're here for. As long as there is reasonable doubt, we cannot kill a man. I'm not saying he's innocent. I'm not saying he's guilty. I'm just saying if the facts can't give you 100% guarantee, even if it's 0.5, that 0.5 means he should not die. Ensue the debate. Five means he should not Love die. It. Yeah. Love it. Great film. Right. Give you one. No, I'm not even going to give you a guess because you know already. Uh, if you know me, you know that my number one is Seven Samurai because, doy, as this BFI poster says right here, the greatest foreign language film ever made. I don't think that's an overstatement. Not only the greatest foreign language film ever made, the most influential foreign language film ever made. The fact that the this movie has been remade frame for frame as a Western twice. The fact that the the overarching narrative of this movie, which is seven people come together to defend a village from an invading force, has been used in so many countless movies. It's ridiculous. It's even been used as a plot device in episodes of series. Look at look at the village invasion in Man in the I think it was the first season of Mandalorian. It's literally seven samurai. It's literally and, seven. And can samurai. I say? And some may disagree. Some may agree. Avengers. Avengers Assemble. Completely. Or better or worse, seven samurai. Completely. Completely, bro. <laughs> legitimately tell me i'm wrong a group of people band together to defend their village from an invading force in this case it just happens to be big worms instead of you know people with swords <laughs> yeah. Yeah. No, you're right there you go ah, dude no, it's a great film it's a, great, it's a great film it's long but doesn't feel long it's got great character moments. It's heartfelt. It's sad. It gives you levity. The sword scenes are really hard hitting, not just for the time, but just in general. It truly, truly is a masterpiece. This is Kurosawa's magnum opus. I don't want to hear it about Rashomon's The Better Movie. I adore Rashomon. No, no, no. no. I, this, having watched both, no. No. It's just not. No. Um, Rashomon's easier to take in because it's a shorter film, but it's not the better film. Yeah, exactly exactly that um yeah man this i love this film love this film so right. much so now i'm going to propose something and please I don't know if you'll agree or disagree i feel like we should shelve our number ones i'm down I feel like they're just the the blatant obvious and it's going to be the winners and it you know it's just the way of it that it's going to be one or the other that's going to win either way. Cool. <sighs> so Sin City makes it because that was in both. Mhm. Um did we have anything else? <laughs> we did not. Wow. So Sin City is the number one film, guys. No need to vote. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> um, Full circle, I would like you thought to that M. would be your I number would like one to see film. M in this, if you don't mind. I feel M is an all-time classic, and I'd like to see what people think of it. M? I can, I can work with that. I would like to put the artist, but I don't know how many people have seen it, so I'm going to leave it off. But I encourage you to watch it. Raging Bull? I would go for that. I worry we're going to have a destruction here with Raging Bull being in there, you know. I don't know. M, M has a following, you know. Okay, fair. M has a following. I'm part tempted to go down Clerks. <laughs> okay. Some like it hot. I can, I would listen to that more, actually. <laughs> I was looking at my list while saying that. Some like it hot, I can, I can muck with. Cool. Lock it in. Ladies and gentlemen, the official movie Mount Rushmore of black and white movies from any era, excluding 12 Angry Men and 
Seven Samurai, in no particular order, is... Sin City. Our second entry is... Some Like It Hot. Our third entry is... M. Our final entry into the movie Mount Rushmore of black and white movies from any era is... Raging Bull. I'm not happy with this Rushmore. Because... I genuinely feel we could take Sin City and M out and reinsert our two number ones and it might be a better Rushmore. I just feel they're going to win. They've always destroyed. I don't know, man. Raging Bull and some like it hot in there. I don't know. Do you know what I'm willing to do? I'll take Sin City off because I can see that getting demolished. I'm going to be yeah. I'll let you put Seven Samurai in, but I'm will I'm so intrigued to see what M does. I'm willing to sacrifice twelve angry men. Okay, so for the first time ever, we are rewriting. <laughs> Some poor AI has just chiseled a face and that has to just wipe twelve, <laughs> wipe it off. Sin City is out there. Sorry, Marv, but yeah. So we're leaving twelve angry men off. All right, cool, I'm, man. Listen, listen. I am that intrigued. I'm. I. It's not often I'd be willing to battle or to, to eliminate twelve angry men, but I'm so intrigued to see what M does. Watch M win now. Go on. Ninety-five <laughs> percent. <laughs> can you imagine? I'm actually kind of. I'm kind of rooting for M to do really well now. <laughs> I, I'm really like for me because the worst thing that can happen to me now. Is six percent M, and I've left off twelve angry men. Like I've, I've just, I've just like violated my boy. Do you know what I mean? But I'm, I, I, I could put money down that this film's gonna do well. If people know film, well, if, if people can appreciate twelve angry men and seven samurai, it's the kind of people that can muck with M. Herein lies the problem. We now enter the silver screen time travel multiverse because at the time of recording, the sixteenth of January, I can say that next week which is the week after the 16th of January, we will be doing our next live show right here on Silver Screen Dudes. And it will be the long-awaited Top 10 Westerns. However, at the time of this video releasing... <laughs> excuse me. At the time of this video releasing, the live video will already have aired. So you won't know what the result is for two weeks. No. Well, we won't know. They, they just have that. to wait. Fair they have that. to wait one week. Where is you that? will already know what the result is because we will have announced it last week. Oh, cool. yeah. uh, you see how our mind messed up here. Basically, next week, uh, the last week of January, we're doing a live show. But by the time this video airs, the live show will have been last week already just because of the way the release schedule works. So hope you all enjoy Top 10 Westerns and hope you all enjoy this video. There we are. Hope you enjoyed my number one. I'm still battling it. <laughs> <laughs> all right. Let's wrap it up then. Okay, guys. So you know what to do. Head on over to X at Movie MT Rushmore or at Movie Pulse for you. We're going to be retweeting so you can't vote twice. And that's where you will have the chance to do your laser focused vote for El Capitan El Nimero. The best of the best of the best. Sir, with honors and to quote Highlander, there could be only one. And be sure to keep it Silver Screen Dude, the Silver Screen Dudes, because we deliver fresh news to you daily, baby. We do indeed. And yeah, so just keep it right here on the Silver Screen Dudes. For well, your latest and greatest, there'll be a, there should be some reviews coming out pretty soon as well. So uh, I hope, should hopefully be doing a review for Mean Girls. That should be out again by the time this video airs. But yeah, stay tuned to the channel for reviews, classic reviews, movie news. It's all right here. If you're movie fans, this is the place to be. And we will see you guys next week right here on the Silver Screen Dudes. See ya. See ya.